All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. So the reason I'm posting this video a week later than I was originally supposed to is because this week I made two videos and waited a week. So I had one video ready to upload while I was making the second video. So I would never be late on uploading videos again. Hopefully, hopefully this helps my scheduling. Anyways, so I got the Arduino 101 from Kamal. He's kind of busy nowadays because he's leading his uh, first robotics team. We're having trouble setting up meetings and because like when he's available, I'm not available. Or like I keep on forgetting to get meeting rooms for us. That's what usually ends up happening. Basically the difference between this and the normal Arduino is that this has BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy. And it also has an accelerometer and a gyroscope. This makes it so compact. We're going to try to get glide tests on this aircraft, but we also want to make progress on the flight controller. So we're going to have the, we're going to have this control the aircraft instead of me controlling it. So we're going to like throw it off the roof of the parking lot and this is going to like glide it down smoothly. That's the idea. There we go. So left, right, up, down. All right. I think that's all there is to it. I tuned the PIDs here. Uh, and that's the program code uh, and the mixing is all done correctly basically what this if statement does is it waits for the right time to get a reading and the PID looping wasn't synchronized with that so the PIDs would loop whenever and then the readings from the accelerometer and gyro they would loop whenever so the two wouldn't be synchronized and the data used in the PID loop wouldn't be accurate so I changed the PID uh, loop to synchronize them both so every time that there's a PID calculation going on it's right after you get a reading If you see the paper straight up lifts up so the paper is the problem here paper is always the problem so the reason I switched from the test bed aircraft to this one is because I thought that that had too much control on the uh, Elevon so instead of like worrying about cutting it down and like making it realistic to this one I decided to just put it on this one anyways I didn't screw in the servo arms correctly so we're gonna have to do a little bit of trimming here and the way the trimming done is in this program is basically we add minus a number to the uh, end output number and that trims it. This is actually pretty cool because the more and more problems I end up having the more I end up learning about how actual controllers or TX controllers like the Tyrannus and how like the internals of those work. It might be too small. It might be too small given the speed that we're trying to operate at. So it can't pull the nose back up fast enough. So what we can do is, or what I've done right now, is pull the center of gravity back. I'm probably going to start removing weight from the nose and moving the center of gravity back, which is going to decrease stability, but we have a computer for that on board. So we're going to see what we can work with. If anything, that last flight pretty much confirms it that there's not enough control. So I'm gonna remove. I'm gonna start moving the center of gravity back. This is the test with the 1500 milliamp hour battery. The thing that's really bugging me out. I still don't know why it immediately does this dive thing and then comes back up. I used to initially thought it was because when I first pushed it, I would give it a little up push like unconsciously, and then that would cause the PIDs, you know, to come all the way down and then push the nose down. But even when I was like pushing it down like this, it would do the little dive and then come back up. So we're good. So where we're at right now, we, uh, the airplane has control over pitch axes, the roll axes, all that's fine. The PIDs are tuned. So we need to get a glide slope next. So eventually the next step is... And... Of course the next logical thing to do is just throw this off. So yeah, 